Hello, I'm Tim 2.10. Um, I'm here with Keeson, Big Keeson, um, Big D, Little Delicious, uh, aka Raymond Ruddington, um, aka Too Much to Talk About, aka 45th and 43rd Street. Okay, you got so many names, it's just it's too much. Okay, you doing but a lot of ad. You doing a lot of ad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got to give you one of those nah, every I'm, I'm going to clear up the AKA when, when it's my turn. I'm going to clear them up, okay? Okay, so here we go, y'all. First things first. As always, we like to throw that disclaimer out here saying that these are our opinions, and that's it. You know, it's okay to agree to disagree, because sometimes me and him disagree and agree, and, you know, sometimes it's his opinion, you know, and it's a nice opinion, and I just be like, yeah, that's a nice opinion. But this video is about when your wife is in the car and your mama's in the car, you driving, who should sit in the front? Ooh. You want to you so, start this um, out? Big Keeson. Yeah. Go to you first. All right. So, if my wife's in the car and my mom's in the car, if there's no ailments of anyone, no ailments, or anything of that nature, they're both fully functioning and healthy. The wife got to sit in the front. Okay, let me ask you this. Why do you say that? I say that because if you're under 18, and for most people, their mother is their protector, that's, you know, their best friend, so forth and whatnot. But when you make that commitment, and again, we're not saying girlfriends. We're not saying woman on the side. We ain't saying, you know, woman you just met yesterday. We're talking about your wife. You made that commitment to your wife as that main woman in your life. With that said, that goes with our question. She is the main woman in your life. And if you choose not to make her that and you put your mother above her, you go home to your wife every night. You see your mom when you see your mom. You made that decision. You won't have to live with it. Because you and your mama could be standing at the bus stop as we see that video. I know the topic came from the video, but in that video, it didn't look good for that brother. <laughs> so, okay, let me ask you this. You know, someone just throw it out here to you. So, you think it would have been okay if he would have sat in the back, she would have drove, his, his wife or his girlfriend, mm -hmm. and the mama sat in the front seat. Do you think that would have been okay? Yes. Because in the video, the mother and the wife already had tension. You could tell by how the wife she said, why is your mom in the front seat? Because they, they already had tension before. It wasn't like they were cordial. So to me, if I know my mom has that tension with my wife as I'm driving up, he drove up with his mom. They should have been having that conversation from, from the jump on the coming there saying, hey, you know, hey, mom, you know, you and her don't get along like that you probably going to have to jump in the back seat or at least offer and then let her make that decision. And I think the mother-in-law was the catalyst of this all because all she had to do was offer. You offer it to the daughter-in-law and say, hey, would you would you like me to sit in the back seat? Now you take all the emphasis off you and you put it on the daughter-in-law and say, well, no, you it's okay, Miss A, Miss so-and-so. You can go ahead and sit in the front and I'll sit in the back. Daughter-in-law made the decision. Or daughter-in-law can say, no, you know what? I would like to sit in the front. Daughter-in-law made the decision. If he knew it was going to get to that and the mother wasn't going to respond to that, he should have jumped out and said, hey, babe, hey, here are the keys. Won't you drive? I'm going to jump in the back seat. And depending on his relationship with his mother, his mother would have said, hey, I'm going to sit in the back seat with my son. Or she would have said nothing. She would just stay where she was. And it wouldn't have been any issue. The wife would have been empowered. But in that situation, the wife was not empowered, and I wouldn't be shocked if they don't make it out the next couple of weeks. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. You took that kind of you went kind of far with that. One. You know this light channel. You gonna try to jump into the deep end already? So I'm gonna say this though. Michael Phelps. Um, <laughs> finding out that it was the young lady's car. Woo. How do, how as a man should you respond knowing it? It's not your car. So it's it's 
it's not as deep as, as we're making it because if you're married, technically it's both of your cars. Don't yeah, your name might be on it, but if you go to court, get Wait, the before, you go, before you go there, let me say it this way. It's the way how it was presented. Mm-hmm. And it's the way how the mother in law mm-hmm. you think all that negative energy. You mm-hmm. think you know, it's one thing to feel negative energy, mm-hmm. but it's another thing to see it mm-hmm. when you're watching it. You're like, wait, hold on. She doubled down like a casino, too. She's like, yup, and I'm his mama. And I'm always... So, what happens when I send you, your son, to live with you, his mama? Mm. Well, you, you need know, to go like back I to said, your wife. I don't know you why know, you here. <laughs> You know, I sit here sometimes and I think about these stories that I see and I think people go out of their way to do the dummy. Mm-hmm. And when I mean the dummy, instead of understanding that they're wrong, they double down on it. It's like, you know, it's okay to be wrong and admit you wrong, but it's another thing to know you wrong, then double down on being wrong and blame somebody else like it's their fault. Well, Uncle Tim, let's take this. Let's take this camera you don't put on me. Let's turn it around. See, you asked me the question, and you thought I was okay. just going to stay with you. What is your opinion on this? Well, see, the thing is, the reason why I put it like this, man, you share the same opinion. Mm-hmm. I believe you cannot disrespect the woman of the house or the woman of the car. The woman of the house and the car is your wife. Mm-hmm. You married her in the eyes of God. You are a legally binding contract with this individual. Mm-hmm. This is not a game. This is a person that you share your innermost secrets with, your innermost desires and thoughts. But instead, you don't put your mom in the damn front seat. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put my mom in the front seat. I love my mom, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't put her in the front seat of my car when my wife is in the car. Right, and again, this is no ailments or anything like that. This is everyone's health. I see. Now, see, I'm going to say that. I see if there was an ailment. My wife would see if there was an ailment. Mm -hmm. If there was an ailment, I would sit my black behind in the back seat. Because the tension that you will create is unnecessary. And as a man, you should know right off the bat. Well, I, I, th- where I think that tension might be inherent, too. So even if that situation where the daughter-in-law didn't say anything. So in, in the video, she says something. And she, why is your mom sitting there? If she said nothing and sat in the back seat, it would have been tension. Because that man did not draw that line in the sand. If anything, he, he he's with his mom. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be living with her soon. Well, you know, I'm going to say this, Mr. Mr. Keatson. I'm going to say this. And I'm going to be honest here. That ain't the first time that done happened with him. Not at not all. That may be the first time with this young lady, but that may not be the first time that that happened with him. No, in the video, she said, I keep making up with your mom. And we keep coming back to situations like this. No, I'm saying not just that with her. Mm -hmm. This probably happened with other relationships down the line. Mm -hmm. Mama don't know her place. Mm. Mama thinks she's still the number one person in your life. That's it. That's done. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's one of those situations when somebody feel they know you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in this world that know you better than you. And if somebody tell you that, they're crazy. Hmm. Nobody knows you better than you. And I feel with me being the person I am and presented with that situation, if I know there was inherited, you know, negativity or hostility or something like that, I wouldn't have burned my mom. If I know y'all two don't get along, I wouldn't have put y'all in the same place together. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the reason why people don't get along is not because the daughter-in-law did something wrong. It's because sometimes people cannot see somebody else in the line. See somebody else with their son. He doing good. He happy. He talking about doing this with his life. Mm -hmm. Mama taking all the credit, sitting there talking like she done raised him up as a man. No, you didn't. You was a great parent. Let's leave it at that. Well, I think, you know, some people aren't as classy as as they think they are. Because to me, any self-respecting mother in this situation would, again, just had a a simple question. Would you like me to sit in in the back seat, baby? That would have handled everything. But that man, like I said, he didn't put it down. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the wife was a little out of hand by the tone that she took. 
her tone, again, I can understand she had, she was emotional. She felt some type of way. This was compounded. I don't think you need to argue in front of everybody, you know, about whatever issues y'all got going on. But I don't think beyond that that she was wrong. Her frustration, you can tell, was with his mother overstepping and with him for not checking his mom. Hey, you can tell this back from the video. Mama Keith, she's a, a habitual line crosser. Mama Keith crossing that line over and over and over again. You can't... <laughs> you really can't expect somebody not to get upset at that. Mm-hmm. If I already done told you, and brother, come on now, in relationships now, we all know there are people that we got to check. Mm-hmm. Now, I done checked many of people. And I have to check many of people over and over again. And you know what? I know we talked off camera, but I'm going to bring it on camera. If, if that man doesn't feel comfortable checking his mom in front of his wife, and some guys don't, he should have checked his mom in private on their way driving there. Hey, mom, this is her car. I know y'all don't get along like that. You're going to have to come there with some respect or this is going to be a totally different situation, mom. This is my wife. I chose her. She chose me. This got to happen. And he that could have happened long before it ever got to the wife and it would never been an issue with the wife. Hmm. Uh Uh-oh. I'm going to say this, brother. Now, see, this is one of the issues that men you face is. And now we know you're off to. But see, you talk as if everybody got this common sense, that everybody is classy. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know if son is actually ratchet in this situation because some people are just downright ratchet mm-hmm. for no apparent reason. No reason, no common sense would help these people. What I'm trying to say here in a nutshell is even if you would have did everything you could, the situation still probably would have turned out the way it is. It's just like the Indiana Jones effects, as you always say. This is your favorite thing. If he hadn't did this, would all of this still happen? In his case, yeah, because he didn't he didn't create a marker to make the path go different. He just let it ride and let it ride and let it ride. He didn't check anybody. He didn't check his wife. Hey babe, that's my mom. I know y'all don't like each other, but let's not let's not make that an issue in public. You know, we're we gonna figure that out. Or check as well as check his mom. Look, you might not like my wife, but that's my wife. I chose her. You had all the chance in the world before I married her for all the things that you felt was wrong. But now that I've married her, for lack of a term, step the hell back. Because, you know, and somebody brought it up to me about this, Uncle Tim, is that, well, my wife brought it up. And she said, some women have went through that they have been the wife and their mother-in-law have disrespected them. So thus, they're just doing what they ran into when they were younger. And I said, wow, that's, I, I didn't think about it like that. They're just perpetuating the same toxicity, the same negative aspect. But you know what? Somewhere, somebody got to break that cycle. Mm-hmm. It ain't, you know, we just say they, you know, Jada's, nah, we ain't gonna say Jada, we ain't gonna use that in here. Well, we ain't gonna say it's, you know, it's not CC fault to undo all the stuff that happened to you in your past. It's not her fault that you went through all of this and you had to endure stuff. That ain't no damn body but your own. You should have said something. Mm-hmm. Again, we are whole grown ass people. You need to say something. You don't like what you hear? Explain to them the situation. How you're not going to put up with it. Mm-hmm. They don't like the way that you're coming to them, just ask them, just, well, not ask them, explain to them, you're no longer welcome in my house. So, I'm going to end it with this. If you don't like what I do in my house, and that extends to my car, you can always leave. Or catch the damn bus.
with that, Big Keeson, a.k.a., you know what I'm saying, Tony Too Slick. Man, come on. Hey, come on. Hey, you want Big D back? Uh, <laughs> A.K.A. Tony Too Slick. That's Uncle Tim, a.k.a. Tim 2.0. Please follow him. Uh, look in the description for all our information. With that said, salute.